When I look at the world around me, I see design. I see things seem to have a purpose and a meaning to them. So I can conclude that because things appear to be designed, that there should be a designer. Richard Dawkins has said this in his writings. But he concludes that we are fooled. Nature has fooled us, has cheated us. Because when we look around, the world cries out, designer, designer, but evolution has lied to us. There's no designer. We're products of random chance over billions and billions and billions of years. But the truth be known, we are products of the handiwork of God. We are God's crowning jewel. And we use our creativity to fight against Him. We use our imaginations to rail against Him. To our shame, not to God's. To our shame, as a race, as a people. And we need to courageously look at ourselves and examine ourselves. We're far too complex to have arisen from nothing. Science today is making leaps and bounds in the field of biology cosmology, and all the other ologies out there. And when we look at the evidence provided to us by these expertise, we find that the world cries out, designer, designer, designer. And whether it is the mark or the handiwork of a designer, we can cl conclude that there is a designer behind the design. This is not hard to follow. But today, declaring that there is a designer, that makes me a flaming creationist. And that's politically incorrect on YouTube. Yeah. A little plug there. Carl Sagan had a wonderful way of presenting the Cosmos series. And in his day, he was preaching a message of wonder and awe that we could look at the world around us in all of its complexity and all of its incredible design and say, wow, it is awesomely designed and yet there is no designer and feel good about it. Why is it courageous today in the atheist realm to rail against God, to fight against God? Why would that be courageous? Apart from, I guess you find that uh, that Christians or theists will attack you for railing against God. But I don't really see that happening. I don't really see atheists being attacked. Maybe in times past, we could say, well, the Inquisition. You have to go hundreds of years ago. You know. The Inquisition! <laughs> no, no. What about the Inquisition? Well, go back, go back, go back in time. Why is it that it's considered courageous to believe that there is no God? That's not courageous. It's just a worldview that, frankly, hasn't fully been examined. For all the heady, high-mindedness that I hear from atheists and empiricists, I would think that they would look at the evidence that is staring them right in the face, the 
clear evidence of design in everything we see in nature. Design. The mathematics of nature, the complexity of nature, the way things just seem to work together so perfectly well. Today we're living in a world that is fallen. Give us stories that tickle our ears and make us feel all warm and cozy inside. Help us to shed the Bronze Age idea of a god. <laughs> the late Carl Sagan has his mark in the atheist community. Carl Sagan brought us all the warmth and glow of a world full of complexity and wonder without God. As an astrologist, No matter who you are, there are four questions you ask yourself about this world and your worldview. One, origin. Where did you come from? Two, meaning. Does your life have meaning at all? Morality, three. And four, destiny. Where are we going? Where are we headed? Origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. Every worldview seeks to answer these questions. And atheism, which would be the empiricist, imperialist, atheism seeks to answer these same questions through evolutionary glasses. So an atheist looks at the world, looks at the same evidence that we look at, I mean, as a theist and a creationist. I come up with design, the hand of God, and they look at the exact same evidence and they come up with random chance, random processes. Uh, frankly, I think the deck is stacked incredibly in our favor as theists. Um, being the fact that I truly see and I cannot help but see design around me. I, when I see chaos and destruction, it's not because of natural means, although we do see na nature and its storm uh, abilities through typhoons and hurricanes and earthquakes. We see destruction there. Volcanoes are very destructive, but yet, and it can cost lives, I see more meaninglessness and cruelty and evil, not in the storm, but in the slaughter of human beings because of evil men whether that's because of evil governments or corrupt governments. These governments are made of people, and people, corrupt people, are the cause of most of the suffering in the world. Not God, corrupt people. Christopher Hitchinson and atheists like him want to blame Christians or blame theists for the Hurtful things in the world. All hate derives from religion. So if we were to wipe away religion, the world would be a wonderful place? No, I, I don't think so. I think the world would probably be a much worse place if, that were, if you were able to actually wipe religion off the face of the planet. But you see, nature abhors a vacuum. If you were to wipe religion off, hypothetically, you just create another religion for yourself. And I see this happening with atheism. Atheism has become a religion. I mean, it seeks to answer the very questions that theists 
seek to answer, which theists have answers for. Origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. Atheists are doing the same thing, except they come up with a completely naturalistic explanation. They're eliminating God. God being eternal, the first cause, the uncaused cause, the point of singularity, God creating the world and setting it in motion, and not being the absent landlord here. He's very much in tune with what's going on and interacting with his creatures. Truth is the property of solutions that correspond to the real world. But the atheists, they won't believe unless they take their finger and thrust it into his side.